Did you just get a kick-ass console game on your PC because the frame rates are just plain better? Do you wish you didn't have to play it at your desk with your beautiful big screen television sitting in the next room, unused? Does your ass yearn for the couch after hours in that $50 office chair? <laughs> well, then this guide is for you. I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to use your PC like you would a console sitting on the couch in front of your TV. And best of all, not dealing with hair-pulling, endless troubleshooting nightmares. Gone are the days of pressing play, thinking it's not working, but it's really just playing on the wrong monitor. Gone are the days of thinking you got it all correct until you get to what you hope is just a really artsy cutscene because that would explain the missing audio. And gone are the days of trying to swap audio devices, but you don't have your mouse because you didn't think you'd be troubleshooting again. In this guide, I detail what products to buy, how to configure Windows, Steam Big Picture Mode, and your Xbox controller so that moving from your PC to your TV in the other room is a snap. Pick up some memory cards and shove them into your three and a half inch floppy drive because your computer's about to act like a console. Before you begin, why not smash that like button? My setup is as follows. My PC sits under my desk, connected to two desk monitors and one big screen TV over by the couch, making for three monitors total. If you're only using two monitors total, one TV and one desk monitor, the process is a little different and I'll make note of that when needed. Here's what you need. And all of these items are listed in the description for easy purchasing. First thing, a long ass HDMI cable. Since we're going for quality, get an HDMI 2.1 cable to ensure that you'll be able to game in glorious 2160p at 120 hertz. On Amazon, search HDMI 8K and you'll find HDMI 2.1 cables. Even if your TV doesn't support HDMI 2.1, I think it's worth getting so you're future proof and not scratching your head when you buy your new TV and can't get the frame rates you're looking for. Happens to the best of us. My TV is across the room from my PC, so I went ahead and overestimated and bought a 25 foot HDMI 2.0 cable. There's a lot of extra cable, but I just coiled it up and put it behind my entertainment center. I'd rather have too much than too little. The Amazon Choice 25 foot HDMI 2.1 cable costs around $46. My TV doesn't support HDMI 2.1, so I can't personally test, but since HDMI cables are digital, not analog, you don't really need anything fancy. Next up, a tiny HDMI extension cable. I got a one foot HDMI extension cable from Monoprice, which I linked in the comments. If your HDMI connection is farther from the outside of the TV, get a longer extender cable. They go up to three feet. If you're using only two monitors total, you have options. You don't necessarily need the HDMI extension, but I do think it's much easier to plug and unplug. I also got tiny DisplayPort cables for my desk monitors, mostly because my Acer Predator monitor has a cuckoo bananas placement of its ports on the back, making it very difficult to plug in and unplug cables. And Windows 10 HDR support is finicky, so I'm often having to unplug. Check out my review of my Acer Predator monitor to hear more about that. Okay, now we got all the cables we need. Let's talk accessories. <laughs> if you want a game like you're on a console, you better have a controller. In my setup, I've got an Xbox One controller plus wireless adapter for Windows 10. It's kind of pricey at $90, but it's definitely a solid controller and I would highly recommend it. And since Microsoft makes it, it's very compatible with Windows. One hiccup is that you can't recharge it. It only takes batteries. So grab a 48 pack of Amazon brand double A's for $15. Come on, you're an adult now, have batteries. Something that's definitely a help when moving from your desk to your couch is to have a Bluetooth mouse and Bluetooth keyboard. Ideally, two Bluetooth mice and two Bluetooth keyboards so you can just leave the second one over by the couch. This is helpful if you need to do some last minute troubleshooting or need to change the audio device. And I'm in love with my Bluetooth mouse and keyboard. I highly recommend the Logitech Master Keys keyboard and MX Master 3 mouse. These are my recommendations as a video editor more than as a gamer, as these aren't branded as gaming accessories, but I've never had issues gaming with them. The mouse especially has vertical and horizontal scrolling built in, which is a must have for video editors. If your TV is super far from your PC or in an entirely different room, you might wanna also grab a USB extension cable or two that's the same length as your HDMI cable, along with the USB Bluetooth adapter. That way you won't be out of range. The Xbox controller comes with a USB wireless adapter too, so you can use the second USB extension cable for that. And one quick note, on my PC, which I built myself, even though Bluetooth support is built in, my system BIOS doesn't recognize Bluetooth devices, so don't throw away your wired peripherals just yet. Or if you don't have any, pick up a wired mouse and keyboard too. You'll be glad you did when it's 1 a.m. and your computer won't boot Windows. Okay, now that we have the things we need, it's time to let the male and female connectors finally do their thing. Our goal for this setup is for you to be able to be using your PC as normal, then walk over to your TV and plug in the HDMI cable into the HDMI extender, which will turn on the TV and turn off your monitors. Then when you're done, you unplug the TV and your monitors turn on again seamlessly. 
This sidesteps a whole host of issues that would otherwise totally spoil your gaming experience. Check out my video, PC Gaming Sucks, for an in-depth look at how not knowing this trick made me temporarily hate PC gaming. Why would it do that? First, make sure all of your displays are connected to your PC. Make sure to plug in the HDMI extension cable to your TV first, then the long HDMI cable into the extender, and the other end into your PC. Those of you with only two monitors, you can skip the extender if you want, but I would still recommend it. Now, with all displays active, open Settings, System, Display. Click on each monitor in the menu, scroll down and find the section where it says Multiple Displays. Make sure the drop-down menu is set to extend these displays for each monitor. If you're new to multiple monitor setups, each monitor is assigned a number by Windows represented in display settings. Click Identify if you aren't sure which monitor is which, and then drag the boxes representing your monitors into their correct real-life arrangement. For me, my TV is display number three, so I'm gonna click on monitor three, scroll down and check off Make This My Main Display. Now I'm gonna click on monitors one and two, both of my desk monitors, and set them to Disconnect This Display, which conveniently turns both desk monitors off via software. We're exploiting a Windows quirk here by essentially creating two modes for our displays. Mode one is just desk monitors and mode two is just the TV. So now that both desk monitors are off, when you unplug the TV, holy crap, the monitors turn back on with all your settings intact. And when you plug the TV back in, the TV turns on and the monitors turn off. Perfect. If you're a two monitor person, you might be thinking, wait a minute, there's no option for disabled. That's because Windows can be confusing sometimes. Instead of clicking Disabled, if your TV is Monitor 1, click Show Only on 1. Or if your TV is Monitor 2, click Show Only on 2. If you're a dual monitor person, you have another option that doesn't require you to plug or unplug anything. Press the Windows key and P at the same time and the Project menu comes up. Then you can select PC screen only or second screen only. You can figure out which is which through trial and error as my Windows install thinks my main display is my secondary display. I don't know why. The project menu hates setups with more than two monitors, so I personally cannot use that method. But honestly, I like plugging and unplugging more. It's foolproof, I don't need my keyboard, and I can't accidentally choose duplicate, especially when my cable is fully accessible to me via the extender. Next step is setting up your Xbox controller. This part is pretty cut and dry if you went with a wireless adapter. Just plug in the wireless adapter into a USB port, then turn on your Xbox controller. If it's never been connected to anything before, the Xbox button will start flashing. Press and hold the pair button on the wireless adapter until a small light flashes. Press and hold the pair button on the top of the controller. The Xbox button will flash faster, meaning it's searching for the adapter. When it connects, the Xbox button will stay lit. There are different types of Xbox controller configurations you can have, and I've linked to the instructions page on the Xbox website in case you have a different circumstance than me. Okay, now that the controller is working, we want to set up Steam. I am assuming you already have Steam installed. If not, go to steampower.com, download and install it. It's pretty straightforward. To get your PC working like a console as much as possible, we need to configure your Xbox controller to open Steam Big Picture Mode, which is a full screen Steam interface that's easy to use from the couch with a controller. First, we need to configure the Xbox button to open Steam Big Picture Mode instead of the Xbox Game Bar. Steam needs to be restarted for this change to take effect, so make sure it's closed, both the application and the system tray icon before you continue. Go to Settings, Gaming, and in the Xbox Game Bar menu, uncheck Open Xbox Game Bar using this button on a controller. I had a section on Xbox Game Bar and using it to capture gameplay and change audio devices, but it was a world of pain. Buggy kept messing up everything, so stay away. Sometimes it decides you actually did want Xbox Game Bar to open when you press the Xbox button, and it'll just check it off again all by itself. So be aware of that if the Xbox Game Bar opens up unexpectedly. Open up Steam and click the button for Big Picture Mode in the top right-hand corner of the Steam window. Now with Big Picture Mode open, go to Settings, Controller Settings, and check off Guide Button Focuses Steam, which will make the Xbox button act as a Big Picture Mode button. Also, check off Xbox Configuration Support and Xbox Extended Support. You'll need to exit Steam and possibly restart your computer for those settings to take effect. Something to remember, this shortcut will only work if Steam is open, so make sure it's either open in the taskbar or in your system tray before moving over to the couch. Audio devices are probably the most finicky of all the things I mentioned here. To get the most seamless experience, double check these settings. In your desk monitor configuration, open up Spotify and start playing a song or play a video. As long as audio is coming out of your main speakers, you're good to go. Right click the speaker icon in the system tray and then click on sounds and select the playback tab. Whichever device has levels going is your main speaker. If it's a confusing name, you can rename it by clicking on properties and just changing the name. I renamed mine to desk speakers. So get out of properties and look where it says desk speakers. If 
it doesn't say default device, right click on it and select set as default device. Then plug in your TV and in the same menu, find your TV audio. The names will vary, but usually you can use context clues to figure it out. Mine starts with 65 since my TV is 65 inches. Rename it to TV audio to make it easier to find, then check to see if it's set as default device. If not, right click on it and select set as default device. This should ensure that your audio device switches back and forth every time you switch between your couch configuration and your desk configuration. But if you have problems, you can always click on the speaker icon and change it that way. So that's all the setup. We made it easy to plug and unplug your HDMI cables from the TV, configured two modes for our three monitors, desk mode and game mode, set up our controller to open up Steam Big Picture mode when we press the Xbox button, and made sure that the audio devices are set to default for easy audio switching. It's time to try it out. Okay. Here we go, let's try this out. So I have my desk monitors plugged in and my TV is unplugged. I'm making sure that Steam is open on my computer, at least in the system tray. And uh, then I'm just gonna go over to the TV and unplug the HDMI cable and go from there. All right, here we go. If you're a dual monitor person and prefer not to plug and unplug, you can use the Windows key plus P method to get just your TV monitor going. Okay, so the TV is on, the monitors are off, my Xbox controller is on from long pressing the Xbox button. Uh, so you push it one time, which opens Steam, and then press it a second time, and big picture mode opens. Perfect, easy. Um, so a couple of things, if that isn't working, um, Restart Steam. If it still doesn't work, restart the computer. Um, I found that sometimes it's like you have to push it and just wait a second. If that doesn't work, press it a bunch of times and just like press it, press it, press it. And if that doesn't work, restart the computer. Uh, and if it still doesn't work, then I guess you can check your settings. But for me, that's fixed my problems both times. Um, it's pretty easy to just use your mouse to check to make sure your audio device is correct. But uh, yeah, if you want to record games, GeForce Experience you can use. Um, and uh, just make sure you go to settings, privacy settings, and then uncheck desktop recording because it was recording my desktop when I was playing a game, which I, I, I just have no idea why that makes any sense. And if you want, you also don't have to use big picture mode. You can just you know, use your mouse if you have a second mouse and just navigate Steam at your couch, which is also perfectly acceptable. Um, but if we want that like ultra console experience, then doing it with your controller is, is the way to go. And we're back, ready to work again, or whatever. If you found this guide helpful, leave a like. If there's anything else you want help setting up, let me know in the comments. And for more videos like this, make sure to subscribe. I watch the comments section, so please, if you're stuck or need help, leave a comment and I'll answer you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching till the end and I'll see you next time.